This is the generosity of a prodigal tycoon. The life-bound heart flame, which even a lifetime's work of an alchemist might not yield, was casually gifted by Yifeng to a great demon, clueless about the ways of alchemy. At this moment, Yifeng returned to his own guest room, finally escaping the mad alchemists. Suddenly, his top disciple, Hua Yuman, sent a telepathic message. Yifeng replied, I'm here. What's up? Since I obtained a spirit body without impurities, the ancestral elders of the sect have been incessantly asking where I got it from. I don't know how to explain, Hua Yuman said, right after she finished speaking, the system issued a new task, to go on a spending spree in the 10,000 Flowers Valley to improve the living conditions of his top disciple, with a chance to win a heavenly Tao token. Yi Feng had no choice but to go, especially since he had always wanted the heavenly Tao token. He told Hua Yuman to wait, you can't explain it. Let me go to the 10,000 Flowers Valley and clarify things with your ancestral elders. Hua Yuman responded, then I'll wait for you in the 10,000 Flowers Valley. And master, please don't suddenly teleport here again. She didn't want her naked body to be seen again. The next Next day, Yi Feng decided to take Wu Feng and Little Blood with him. While having breakfast, Yi Feng looked at today's extravagant purchase, the life-bound heart flame, deep blue abyssal flame, wondering if it was the flame that accompanied the divine pill he refined yesterday. The deep blue abyssal flame is a flame that grows stronger with the wielder's power. At its pinnacle, it can perfectly refine any grade of herbs. Suddenly, Yi Feng turned to Little Blood and thought, ever since Little Blood joined, aside from the heavenly tear furnace cauldron, I haven't really given any other rewards. Little Blood, feeling Yi Feng gaze, became somewhat anxious and said, Master, could you not look at me with that kind of expression? Even the dog is striving to be the number one sword dog. As a fellow demon, I think it's time for you to step up your game. Upon hearing this, Little Blood was incredibly excited and asked, So, Master, are you going to give me great demon fairy blood or some powerful weapon? Yi Feng shook his head and said, Neither. I have prepared the powerful life-bound heart flame for you. From now on, you will follow old Xia to learn alchemy and strive to become the number one alchemy mantis. Little Blood, feeling resigned, said, I never expected the master to finally take action against me. Such is fate. Master, just give me the life-bound heart flame, I'll handle it myself. Witnessing this, Wu Feng applauded her, this is what makes a great demon. Knowing resistance is futile and calmly accepting it. Then, Yi Feng transferred the life-bound heart flame to Little Blood. After the transfer, Little Blood, tears in her eyes, caressed the heavenly tear furnace cauldron, lamenting, if I had known I'd embark on the path of alchemy, I wouldn't have tortured my cauldron. These scratches really pain my heart. Seeing this, Yi Feng decided to up the ante and said, I'll give you the Nine Dragons Burning Sky Cauldron. You can continue using that Heavenly Tear Furnace Cauldron as a weapon. With the Nine Dragons Burning Sky Cauldron in hand, Little Blood quickly lost interest in the Heavenly Tear Furnace Cauldron, kicking it away. She moved on to the new cauldron with remarkable speed. Little Blood, I also have a Purple Thunder Mysterious Flame here. I might as well give it to you too. Little Blood, holding the Nine Dragons Cauldron, happily responded, an alchemist only needs one heart flame. Another one would be useless. I know it's useless. That's why I said I'd give it to you. Little Blood, sensing something amiss, protested, please. No, Master. Life-bound heart flames will repel each other. Nevertheless, Yi Feng fused the purple thunder mysterious flame into Little Blood as well. Wu Feng suddenly realized, the pseudo-life-bound heart flame that Grandpa spent 200 years condensing really isn't worth much. It's a good thing Grandpa sent it. By this time, Yi Feng and his group had arrived at the 10,000 Flowers Valley. Yi Feng found the place beautiful, like a hidden paradise. However, Little Blood had a gloomy expression and said, this is no hidden paradise. Surprised, Yi Feng asked, is there a problem? Wu Feng explained, don't be deceived by the appearances here. This place once poisoned a great ascended master to death. This revelation made Yi Feng look at the place with new respect. Upon arriving at the gate, Hua Yuman had been waiting for some time. Wu Feng and Little Blood were somewhat confused. When did Yi Feng take on a disciple? And I only know that this woman is even stronger than me. Hua Yi Feng strolled over leisurely and asked, senior disciple, doesn't the 10,000 Flowers Valley have a protective formation? Hua Yuman replied, of course, we have one. The 10,000 Flowers Valley has a heritage of tens of thousands of years. Not only do we have a formation, but even an ascended master attacking us wouldn't be a problem. And what if a group of ascended masters attack? Would you be afraid then? Hua Yuman was momentarily dumbfounded. Master, what you're saying is a bit unrealistic. The 10,000 Flowers Valley doesn't have that many enemies. A group of ascended masters? That's just nonsense. However, this was just Yi Feng's way of squandering wealth. Since the 10,000 Flowers Valley can't withstand a group of ascended masters, shouldn't we improve the formation, system, the system confirmed this and rewarded Yi Feng with a hundred thousand prodigal points and the ten thousand flowers poison spirit array super enhanced edition manual as well as a heavenly Tao token. Yi Feng was very satisfied. Next time I visit the heavenly secrets pavilion, I should also upgrade them, he mused. Then he handed over the enhanced formation manual to Hua Yuman. By the way, senior disciple, have you spent all the things I gave you before? Hua Yuman hesitated and then, with a slightly red face, admitted, Master, I still can't bring myself to squander them. 
Those items are too precious. Yi Feng was so frustrated he didn't know what to say. This senior disciple is even less trouble-free than the second disciple. I really need to get Huayuman on the right path of squandering. System, I'm thinking of temporarily not giving away the formation manual. Does this count as a failure in squandering? Will the rewards be taken back? However, the system responded with an arrogant tone. No, the rewards won't be taken back. I can't lose face like that. As long as Yi Feng proposes improvements for the 10,000 Flowers Valley, rewards will be given. How the rewards are used is entirely entirely up to the host. Who am I to judge? Since that's the case, senior disciple, please take me to meet your ancestral elders. Upon arriving at the 10,000 Flowers Hall, an ancestral elder asked Yi Feng, are you Yiman's master? Yi Feng looked genuinely surprised. The three ancestral elders in front of him were all quite short. The red one was the great ancestral elder Zhu Binglan. The green one was the second ancestral elder Chen Weimon. And the yellow one was the third ancestral elder Gu Jia. They all started questioning how Yi Feng managed to deceive Yiman. Yi Feng found this amusing and even squatted down to take a closer look at the great ancestral elder. These tiny ancestral elders are too cute. I came here to question you, and you don't even realize your mistake. The great ancestral elder was puzzled. What have we done wrong? Yi Feng then asked Huayuman to bring out 100 ghost bewitching grasses. Hearing about the ghost bewitching grass, the second ancestral elder was shocked. What? Huayuman, you actually have ghost bewitching grass. Huayuman obediently handed over the ghost bewitching grass to Yi Feng. He slowly said, do the three ancestral elders realize their mistake now? However, the great great ancestral elder insisted, no matter why you're here, we absolutely did nothing wrong. Even if you are Huayuman's master, you have no right to question us. Junior brother Wu Feng chopped these 100 ghost bewitching grasses into pieces. Upon hearing this, Wu Feng immediately took out a divine artifact kitchen knife. With the knife skills he had honed over time, he quickly chopped them up. The ancestral elders were speechless. What does this mean? Are you threatening us with such brute force? Such arrogance and waste is shameful. Yet, Yi Feng asked Huayuman to bring another 100 withered soul brand branches. Senior disciple, bring another 100 withered soul branches for my junior brother Wu Feng to chop. Hui Yuman could only comply sorrowfully and continued the extravagant destruction in front of the ancestral elders. The great ancestral elder and the second ancestral elder disdainfully commented, it's your own property, waste it if you want. We don't care. The third ancestral elder suggested, is it possible that these items were originally gifts for Hui Yuman? In other words, these precious materials can be considered the property of the 10,000 Flowers Valley. Yi Feng didn't stop. Junior brother Wu Feng, chop up a hundred five poisons hundred fragrance flowers as well. This alarmed the ancestral elders. We understand our mistake, Yi Feng. Please stop. They pleaded, coming to Yi Feng's feet and begging him not to continue his wasteful actions. Why Yi Feng ignored their pleas and pour out those hundred drops of soul-scorching spirit bamboo water as well. In just a few minutes, the great ancestral elder and the second ancestral elder were painfully watching the remnants scattered on the ground. Why Yi Feng then explained his actions. These items were originally for Hua Yiman to squander. She she could use them for anything, even for soaking her feet or feeding poisonous insects. But she has a difficulty in squandering, she just doesn't do it. And you, as ancestral elders, failed to supervise my senior disciples squandering. So, it's your fault. The second ancestral elder, heartbroken, picked up the remnants. Maybe we can still use them if we wash them. We at the 10,000 Flowers Valley are inherently thrifty and frugal, so squandering like this is indeed hard for us. Yi Feng questioned them. If my senior disciple had learned to squander, these items wouldn't have gone to waste. If she learned to enjoy them, like making tea, you all could have enjoyed it too. The great ancestral elder felt wrong. We understand, but it's really hard for us to accept this internally. Yi Feng then pulled out his trump card. Feeling bad, aren't you? This is the 10,000 Flowers Poison Spirit Array Super Enhanced Edition Manual, capable of withstanding a group of ascended beings. You might think it's not real, but I will really chop it up. The great ancestral elder hurriedly asked him to stop. I believe you, I really do. Yi Feng ignored this and instructed Wu Feng to continue chopping. The great ancestral elder could only watch in agony as Wu Feng, with his skilled chopping technique, shredded the manual. The great ancestral elder and the second ancestral elder were stunned. This is simply a waste of heavenly gifts. Only the third ancestral elder, although pained, appeared calm. Yi Feng then looked at the 10,000 Flowers Valley's collection of precious toxic plants. Everything is fine, but there's just too little. How can I train my senior disciple with this? The great ancestral elder helplessly explained, many things have become extinct on the heavenly Dao battlefield. There's nothing we can do about it. Yi Feng then made a proposal to the system. My senior disciple is living too harshly, trying to cultivate the body of 10,000 poisons, but lacking even basic toxic plants. The system immediately rewarded him with a 100,000 prodigal points, arranged for a 100 doses of various toxic spiritual grasses required for the body of 10,000 poisons, and awarded two heavenly Tao tokens. Then, Yi Feng threw out 50 more toxic spiritual grasses. How can she practice the body of 10,000 poisons without the materials? Junior brother Wu Feng chopped these 50 doses of toxic 
toxic spiritual grass. The great ancestral elder was in agony. It's not our fault that the materials are hard to find. The second ancestral elder was also crying. Tell us what you want us to do. We will change. Please stop cutting. Yi Feng replied arrogantly. I'll see if there's anything else you're lacking. He then pointed at the third ancestral elder. Take note. First, tear down all the dwellings in the 10,000 Flowers Valley. They are built with ordinary toxic plants and are useless. Next, uproot most of the toxic herbs planted in the 10,000 Flowers Valley. They are too common. The second ancestral elder was devastated. We worked so hard to grow these. In just two hours, the entire 10,000 Flowers Valley was dismantled, leaving only a few pillars. Yi Feng earned 1.8 million prodigal points and 9 heavenly Dao tokens. He planned to collect 18 tokens and take the Star Soul sect members out for a day. Before leaving, Yi Feng warned the ancestral elders, I will take care of all your toxic plants. Make sure you cure my disciples' difficulty in squandering. The second ancestral elder responded, Understood. Please don't come again. Afterward, Yi Feng left with Wu Feng and the others. Today's work is done. Let's head back to the sect. He hadn't checked today's squandron item yet. Upon opening it, he found a painting imbued with the merciless sword path, containing powerful, merciless sword intent. Yi Feng pondered, How should I deal with this painting? Never mind. Let's find a town to rest in. Maybe inspiration will strike. After a hearty meal in a town, Yi Feng was so full he could barely walk. The nine turn crystal shrimps are delicious when preserved in their original flavor, but why is the side dish intestine sashimi? At that moment, Yi Feng noticed someone looking at him and instinctively said, What are you looking at? The indifferent young man Bai Lei coldly replied, Looking at you, what's it to you? Yi Feng's temper flared up. You're asking for trouble, aren't you? Unexpectedly, Bai Lei opened a painting, revealing that he had noticed Yi Feng practicing the death sword intent. The painting contained death sword intent, and he wanted to sell it to Yi Feng. Yi Feng was speechless. Turns out you're a salesman. Well, this gives me a chance to squander. Bai Lei, acting familiar, said, Brother, are you interested? Just say the word. If not, I'll find someone else. Of course, I'm interested, but I need to check the merchandise first. Bai Lei pointed to a nearby restaurant. Let's go in and talk. Meanwhile, an agitated middle-aged man was rushing on his way, exclaiming, My wayward disciple, stealing my paintings again. If you dare to sell it cheaply this time, I'll finish you. At that moment, Yi Feng confirmed that the painting indeed contained death sword intent. This painting is good. I'll buy it. Name your price. However, Bai Lei simply said, The cost of a meal will do. Yi Feng, intent on squandering, protested, That won't do. Such an incredible painting can't just be sold for the price of a meal. Who do you think I am? This response stunned Bai Lei. Is it wrong to sell it cheaply? Yi Feng, not wanting to explain further, said, I'm so poor that I only have money left. Name a market price, and I'll pay ten times that. Unexpectedly, Bai Lei then refused to sell. You're so keen to spend money. Are you sick? If you're sick, I don't have a cure. I'm not selling the painting anymore. At this point, Little Blood stepped forward, blocking Bai Lei and making him sit back down. Seeing Little Blood's strength, Bai Lei no longer dared to be arrogant and respectfully offered the painting to Yi Feng for free. Boss, I'll give you the painting, but I really don't know its market value. I stole it from my master. I just don't want to study painting and hope to be expelled by my master. But that old man is too tolerant. Even after I've stolen and sold a dozen of his paintings, he still keeps me. Hearing this, Yi Feng thought of his own painting with the merciless sword intent. Since he doesn't want money, it's perfect to trade painting for painting. My painting imbued with sword principles is far more valuable than a painting with mere sword intent. Bai Lei opened Yi Feng's painting and saw nothing special. Big brother, why is your painting so ugly? Little wonder he doesn't want to pursue the path of painting. This guy really doesn't know the value of art. Just then, Bai Lei's master burst in. Bai Lei, you ungrateful disciple, where is my painting? But upon seeing Yi Feng, he paused in surprise. The next second, Bai Lei was suddenly attacked by his master. You wastrel. I spent seven days and nights observing sword cultivators to create a painting imbued with death sword intent. How could you just trade it away? Bai Lei begged him to stop. Master, please don't scold me again. This time I didn't trade the painting for wine, but exchanged it with this brother for another painting. After Bai Lei's unfortunate beating, Yi Feng commented, I'm the real prodigal here. How can he steal my title? After beating Bai Lei, his master smiled at Yi Feng. Since you already possess death sword intent, this painting might not be of much use to you. My foolish disciple knows nothing. How about we exchange the paintings back? I can offer you something extra in return. However, Yi Feng, having gained possession of the item, was not inclined to return it. I'm sorry, senior. Our transaction is already complete. Yi Feng smirked and started tearing up the painting in front of Bai Lei's master, quickly reducing it to shreds, much to his dismay. This was one of my favorite five paintings. You're just like my unworthy disciple, a prodigal. In fact, even more so, were you born to squander? Yi Feng enjoyed these words, feeling complimented. Bai Lei then suggested to his master, why not take a look at the painting we got in exchange? It might be even more valuable. As Bai Lei opened the painting of Merciless Sword Path, its powerful essence burst forth, leaving Bai Lei's master stunned. It's the sword principle, Merciless Sword Path. Bai Lei, following Yi Feng's lead, tore up the Merciless Sword Path painting in front of his master. His master was infuriated. What on earth are you
you doing? Bai Lei retorted without hesitation, tearing up a painting. What's so great about this lousy drawing? Meanwhile, Yi Feng completed his prodigal task and received 10,000 artistic path enlightenment fragments. Observing the master and disciple, Yi Feng was somewhat speechless. These two seem to be even better at squandering than I am. This can't be tolerated. He then said to Bai Lei, Do you know what people call me? Everyone who knows me calls me the strongest prodigal son. No one has dared to outdo me in squandering right in front of me, but you've done it. I think we can continue this game. Bai Lei disdainfully responded, Yi brother, no offense, but I have a master who lets me squander as I please. Do you have one? I can easily use precious paintings for squandering. Can you? Just this lousy painting of yours? My master could paint better than this with the mouth below his body. His master, hearing this, kicked Bai Lei away, exclaiming, who the hell paints with the mouth below their body? It's bad enough you wasted my paintings, but now you're tarnishing my reputation. Believe it or not, when we get back, I'll use my brush to shut the mouth below your body. Then he beat Bai Lei again. You don't study painting, and you don't even realize how precious the painting you just tore up was. You have no right to compete in squandering. Bai Lei, however, refused to admit defeat. So what? No matter how precious the painting, if brother Yi doesn't dare to tear it, I do. When it comes to squandering, it has to be me. Bai Lei, Yi Feng's competitive spirit was now fully ignited. He took out an artistic path enlightenment fragment, startling both master and disciple. They wondered what was going on. Yi Feng motioned for little blood to hold Bai Lei down. Today, I'll show him what real squandering is. At this point, Bai Lei realized what Yi Feng was about to do and quickly begged for mercy. Big brother, I was wrong. It's just a vain title. Don't do this. I really don't like painting. Please don't torture me. Yi Feng, with a menacing smile, replied, a vain title? In my eyes, being a prodigal son is sacred and inviolable. Bai Lei was held down, hoping to seek help from his master, but his master was more than willing to help hold him down. Need a hand with that? As Bai Lei looked horrified, Yi Feng fed him the artistic path enlightenment fragment. Soon, all 10,000 fragments were absorbed into Bai Lei, who whimpered, I'm not pure anymore. His master spoke disdainfully, you wanted to compete in squandering, look at him, this is real squandering. I don't care anymore. Now that your understanding of painting surpasses mine, there's nothing left for me to teach. From this moment, you are expelled from my tutelage. Our master-disciple relationship is also. Yi Feng, sensing something, quickly interjected, hold on, don't try to pass this guy off to me. I don't want him. Bai Lei's master, realizing he was seen through, exclaimed, how did you guess? Suddenly, little blood spoke up, master, I think we should take this guy back to our sect. Yi Feng was surprised, why? Little blood thought he had potential as a prodigal and suggested bringing him back to the sect. Yi Feng was hesitant, although this guy has some talent for squandering, our master said I can't bring more people back. Little blood had a solution, master, you could have him paint a portrait for the sect leader. She would agree. After all, which woman doesn't want to preserve her beauty? Yi Feng whimsically imagined his beautiful master being portrayed in a painting, but remarked, just that seems a bit uninteresting. Little blood leaned in closer to Yi Feng and whispered, master, have you ever heard of a painter named Ben Zi who created erotic art? By Lei's master, thinking this plan had little chance of success, said, young master Yi, I can no longer handle this wayward disciple. I feel only you can keep him in check. However, after hearing Little Blood's last words, Yi Feng immediately agreed to take Bai Lei under his wing. Bai Lei's master, seeing this, didn't linger. After a tearful goodbye with Bai Lei, he quickly made his escape. Bai Lei, feeling abandoned, shouted, old man, come back. Outside, Bai Lei's master joyfully danced in the street, happy to finally be rid of his troublesome disciple and free to chase after women. Bai Lei, watching this scene, commented cynically, I knew it. That old lecher always sneaks off to the brothel. He then resignedly followed Yi Feng, hoping Yi Feng wouldn't make him study painting as he truly disliked it. Yi Feng gave a noncommittal response, we'll see, but most likely, yes. At that moment, Wu Feng, Yi Feng's junior brother, arrived. Big senior brother, where are we leaving? Seeing Bai Lei kneeling and thanking Yi Feng, Wu Feng felt something was off. Seems like our sect has gained another member. The next day, Yi Feng and his group returned to the Star Soul sect. Bai Lei, carrying his luggage, was confused by the dilapidated state of the sect's entrance. I hope I haven't been brought here to be harvested for organs. Yesterday, Wu Feng said that in a Star Soul sect, each great demon gets two life-bound heart flames, and the chefs have dragon spirits. This doesn't look like such a decrepit sect. Suddenly, Bai Lei noticed a figure flying in the sky. It was Yellow Dog, a long unseen member of the sect, now adept at sword flying. Wu Feng and Little Blood weren't surprised, being used to the sect's old timers. They just noted Yellow Dog's rapid progress. Bai Lei was stunned. This dog is part of our sect? What's going on? Soon, Old Bai and Yellow Dog started sparring, with Old Bai wielding a familiar heavenly tear furnace cauldron and Yellow Dog grasping a long sword sword in its mouth. Bai Lei was even more astonished. This dog has a dual sword mode, as Yellow Dog and Old Bai sparred. Bai Lei watched, puzzled, is our sect specialized in training great demons? Yi Feng clarified, no, we only have Sword Dog and Little Blood so far. Bai Lei sighed in relief, good, just two. At that moment, Golden Wheel, who was sweeping, greeted Yi Feng respectfully, young master Yi, you're back. Yi Feng had something
something to assign to him. Golden Wheel, you're just in time. From today, you'll be working with Bailey. Golden Wheel, intrigued, asked Bailey, brother, are you also an ascended strong one? Bailey grimaced, no, but then he thought something was amiss. Could this janitor be an ascended strong one? Why would an ascended be doing menial tasks? This is so bizarre. Bailey was already preparing to flee. Golden Wheel, seeing through his thoughts, figured, looks like young Master Yi wants me to keep an eye on him. Time to give him a little shock. Just then, a tribulation crossing realm great demon flew by. Golden Wheel casually struck it down, muttering, this is the eighth tribulation crossing realm great demon in the last two days. Tonight's meal will be improved again. The next second, Golden Wheel's casual strike down the flying great demon. Bailey was indeed scared. That's a tribulation crossing realm great demon, and you took it down just like that. Golden Wheel said meaningfully, after all, I could ascend at any time, but young Master Yi doesn't let me go. So, I stay. Now, young Master Yi doesn't let you go. Do you understand? Bailey looked utterly hopeless. Seems like there's no hope of escaping. Meanwhile, inside the sex main hall, Luo Chinchua sarcastically questioned Yi Feng, truly worthy of being my direct disciple, indeed expanding the sect single-handedly. Now you've brought another person. How do you explain this? Yi Feng explained, the person I brought this time is a painter cultivator. Painter cultivators can infuse various sword intents and saber intents into their paintings. If we have him paint a portrait of you, master, even after your ascension to the celestial heights, your beauty can still be worshipped by those in the lower realms. Thinking it over, Luo Chinchua found the idea appealing. I might have misjudged you this time, but never mind that. Where did you take Wu Feng and Little Blood? Yi Feng shared that they went to Heavenly Elixir City and recounted their glorious achievements. Hearing this, Luo Chinchua slammed the table. You dared to crush divine pills in front of so many alchemists. It's a miracle you made it back. Little Blood is a body cultivator. Why force her to refine pills? And why bully the ancestral elders of the Ten Thousand Flowers Valley? Why squander so many precious items so recklessly? Don't you feel any regret? Sweating, Yi Feng looked at the broken floor tiles and got an idea. He kicked another tile to illustrate his point. Luo Chinchua was puzzled. What are you doing now? Yi Feng explained, those so-called precious items are like these broken tiles. Would you feel regret over breaking them? To his surprise, Luo Chinchua said she did feel regret. Why Yi Feng was speechless. Master, you're exaggerating. You feel regret over these broken tiles? Luo Chinchua tearfully explained, it's not the tiles I'm upset about, but the formation beneath them. I just set it up today. It wasn't yet reinforced with a protective formation. You've destroyed its formation I. Yi Feng was completely taken aback. Well, that's quite a coincidence. Luo Chinchua looked at the destroyed formation on the ground, her frustration evident. She found herself missing her master back in celestial heights. My master was so imposing as the Saint Lord of Boundless Sanctuary, but why do I feel so aggrieved as a sect leader? Meanwhile, in celestial heights, at the Boundless Sanctuary, Luo Chinchua's master, Huli, the Saint Lord of Boundless Sanctuary, sneezed. Who's mentioning me? She wondered before continuing her search for Luo Chinchua's whereabouts with her divine sense. Back at Star Soul Sect, Yi Feng, seeing his master's dejected state, felt sorry for her and consulted the system. Since I destroyed the formation I that master set up, shouldn't I compensate her with something better? The system indicated that the formation was a low-end version of the boundless mystic spirit array. Since the sect leader couldn't find a suitable formation I in the mysterious heaven continent, it suggested replacing it with a boundless gathering spirit stone. Seeing this, Yi Feng comforted Luo Chinchua. Master, it's just a formation I. I'll replace it with a better one for you. Luo Chinchua thought it made sense. This prodigal disciple surely has something better. It won't be difficult for him. Just as she was contemplating this, Yi Feng brought out a boundless gathering spirit stone the size of a small mountain. Luo Chinchua felt there was no need for it to be so big. A fist-sized stone would suffice. Hearing this, Yi Feng took out his heavenly tear furnace cauldron. A fist-sized one. You say? Luo Chinchua was alarmed. Yi Feng, don't smash it. But Yi Feng was already pounding away, eventually turning it into a small, spherical bead. Yi Feng grinned. Master, all done. I'll be off then if there's nothing else. Luo Chinchua was speechless. I should have just used the entire boundless gathering spirit stone as the formation I in the first place. Thus, through his prodigal behavior, Yi Feng earned 100,000 prodigal points and a heavenly Dao token. He hadn't expected to be rewarded for this. He then turned his attention to today's extravagant item, the three-leaf fig, a delectable spirit fruit obtainable only from the heavenly Dao battlefield and one of the top 10 supreme spirit fruits of the battlefield, totaling 100,000 fruits. Yi Feng tasted one and mused, this tastes somewhat like a tomato. How to squander 100,000 of these? They can't be consumed like medicinal pills, and they're too large to simply eat. Suddenly, Yi Feng had a flash of inspiration and came up with the idea of a fruit fight. Addressing everyone, Yi Feng declared, the sect has been a bit dull lately. Let's prepare an entertaining event. The rules are simple. Throw spirit fruits at each other. The two individuals hit the most and least will be penalized by eating 5,000 marrow cleansing elixirs. Hearing this punishment, everyone felt terrified, not wanting to consume the distasteful medicinal pills. Luo Chinchua, thinking it
it unbecoming for a lady to participate in such games, was about to refuse. With me present, everyone will be reserved. I'd better return to my cultivation. However, upon hearing Yi Feng mention a gathering spirit stone three meters high, Luo Chanchua swiftly returned. As the leader of the set, I think it's necessary for me to lead by example. So, let's start right away. Surprised, she asked. Aren't you participating? Yi Feng replied. We need a fair referee. I'll sit this one out. Of course, he simply didn't want to embarrass himself and preferred to enjoy the fun as a referee. At that moment, the top sword dog of the continent looked pitifully at Yi Feng, as if asking to be excused from the event. Yi Feng kicked it away. No use acting cute. Get going and participate. The first Star Soul Sect Fruit Fight competition begins. Just as Yi Feng finished speaking, the great ancestral elder was hit squarely by a fruit. Core disciples, who had been absent for a while, also joined in. Du Tian Yu finally got some screen time, exclaiming, I'm going to take down all of you who hogged the spotlight every day. Meanwhile, two visitors arrived at the gates of the Star Soul Sect. Zhang Dongfeng, the national teacher of Red Sun King Country, and Zhao Ting, the Crown Prince. Crown Prince, let's rest here for today, suggested Zhang Dongfeng. Zhao Ting asked the national teacher to simply call him Young Lord. After all, Red Sun King Country controls countless sects. If these small sect people knew I was the Crown Prince, they might get frightened. We're just staying for one night. Let's not cause too much commotion. As he finished speaking, a three-leaf fig was thrown from the main hall, hitting Zhao Ting squarely on the head. When they entered, they found the main hall in complete disarray, witnessing the Star Soul Sex members engaged in a fruit fight. Zhang Dongfang and Zhao Ting were utterly baffled, unsure of what to say. Inside, Yi Feng was directing the chaos. Master, they're not hitting you because they want you to get one of the penalties. You need to get hit. He then turned to Wu Feng. Stop using your chef's knife to cut the spirit fruits. What are you playing at? Fruit Ninja. Zhang Dongfang and Zhao Ting were outraged. They're wasting three leaf figs. As the crown prince, I've only ever had three of these in my life. The national teacher was beside himself with anger. Stop this at once. But a glare from Golden Wheel instantly silenced him, and he even covered Zhao Ting's mouth. Zhao Ting was confused. National teacher, haven't you survived the eight heavenly Dao Thunder tribulations? What are you afraid of? The national teacher urged him to be quiet. Do you see that man in the janitor's robe? He's an ascended strong one. Just one glance nearly annihilated my soul. And that old man is probably also an ascended, likely a soul cultivator who kills without a trace. Finally noticing the visitors, Yi Feng asked who they were. The national teacher replied, We're just passing by. Young friend, do you know what spirit fruit you're throwing? Yi Feng answered, Of course, I know. It's the three leaf fig, one of the top ten spirit fruits from the heavenly Dao battlefield. Is there a problem? The national teacher became frantic. You know their value and still play like this? Who is your sect leader? Name your price for these figs, and I'll buy them all. Yi Feng wasn't impressed. Why should we sell them to you? The national teacher quickly introduced their identities. This is the crown prince of the Red Sun King country, and I am the national teacher. We can definitely afford it. However, Yi Feng, who had no need for money, flatly refused. The national teacher was persistent. These are one of the top 10 spirit fruits exclusive to the Heavenly Dao battlefield. You can't let them be wasted like this. Is the sect leader here? Wu Feng, only now realizing the fig's value, exclaimed, as expected of our senior brother, bringing out such treasures for our enjoyment. Du Tian Yu then chimed in, trying to hog the limelight again. The national teacher was bewildered. Everyone in this sect must be mad. Don't you realize the preciousness of these spirit fruits from the Heavenly Dao battlefield? At that moment, the national teacher noticed the crown prince was missing. Yi Feng pointed ahead. Over there, Zhao Ting had started munching on the figs. The national teacher rushed to Zhao Ting's side. Crown prince, what are you doing? What else can I do? If I can't stop them from wasting, I might as well eat them. Zhao Ting replied. The national teacher was furious. How can you give in like this? Such a spine attitude is unfit for a future king. Zhao Ting, unconcerned, invited the national teacher to join him. Try it, it's actually quite tasty. Initially reluctant, the national teacher gave in after tasting them and started devouring the figs. Why Yi Feng watched the scene in disbelief. Is this really the crown prince and the national teacher? They're eating like beggars. After a long while, the national teacher and Zhao Ting had eaten an astonishing amount of the three-leaf figs, even more than Old Bai and the others had consumed pills earlier. Yi Feng thus easily completed his extravagant task earning 10,000 three-leaf figs. Finding them quite tasty, he decided not to squander these but to keep them for leisurely consumption. As for the spoiled spirit fruits here, they're all yours, he told the national teacher and crown prince. The national teacher and crown prince were overjoyed. Spoiled or not, they're still three-leaf figs. We can take them back. Everyone will love them. Yi Feng then inquired about the fruit fight results from Golden Wheel. Who got hit the least and the most? Golden Wheel reported, the one hit the least was the little yellow dog, and the most was the sect leader. Luo Chanchua's face flushed with embarrassment. It's all your fault, Yi Feng. If you hadn't told me to get hit, I wouldn't have ended up being hit the most. Naturally, Yi Feng wouldn't let his beautiful master eat the distasteful pills. He exchanged her punishment for a hundred three-leaf figs, and the same for the dog, Old Bai and the
the others felt aggrieved. We were promised the foul-tasting pills. How did it turn into three-leaf figs? Zhao Ting, witnessing this, felt a pang of sadness. It seems even a dog is valued more than me. The crown prince, the national teacher advised him to be content. Having these spoiled fruits is good enough. But apart from the taste, these don't seem to increase cultivation. Zhao Ting noted. National teacher, should we still pick them up? Of course, replied the national teacher. Just for their rarity and flavor. Believe me, these spoiled fruits could be traded for favors from many strong cultivators. Half a day passed, and the national teacher and crown prince formally met Luo Qianxue. Recognizing their waste badges, Luo Qianxue realized they were genuine. I've heard that sex within Red Sun King country must pay a protection fee every year and send troops during wars. So, are you two here today to collect money or people? Upon hearing about collecting money, Yi Feng saw it as a perfect opportunity for squandering. However, the national teacher clarified, Red Sun King country doesn't have such traditions. We only occasionally ask for manpower to defend against external threats, but we never collect money. Yi Feng was eager to give money away. No, you must take something. Our sect lacks everything except money. Xiao Ting was baffled. Who insists on giving money away? Luo Qianxue, puzzled, asked, then what brings you here? Xiao Ting turned serious. We're looking for a pill god. We've heard about the recent alchemy conference, where a pill god appeared. We need this pill god to concoct divine pills, crucial for the safety of our kingdom. Luo Qianxue glanced at Yi Feng. Is the pill god you're looking for the one who crushed a divine pill into mud? Yi Feng, feeling guilty, was ready to leave. Um, you two chat. I hope you find that pill god soon. And it's true they've come to the right place. But the problem is, I can't help even if I want to. It was the system that helped me concoct the divine pill. However, before he could make his escape, junior brother Wu Feng stepped forward and said, Senior brother, are they talking about you? What was that divine pill you concocted in Heavenly Elixir City? The next moment, the national teacher and crown prince slowly approached. Junior brother, why did you reveal my identity? Both the national teacher and crown prince were stunned. He's the pill god? Wu Feng was delighted. He had revealed Yi Feng's identity, hoping to put his senior brother in the spotlight and expecting some gratitude. However, he was met with a deathly glare from Yi Feng, causing Wu Feng to quickly take his leave. Senior brother, I'm off first. Yi Feng was left with an expression of grievance, while the national teacher and crown prince, putting together various clues, indeed found them all consistent with the rumors about the pill god. Luo Qianxue then stepped forward. Compared to other kingdoms, Red Sun King country has been quite fair to the sex. It's only reasonable for us to offer our modest support. Hearing his beautiful master speak, Yi Feng readily agreed. Of course, but I don't need to personally handle such a trivial matter. He called over Little Blood and asked the system to create 7-9 pattern divine level tribulation breaking pills, costing 230,000 prodigal points. Yi Feng was shocked. What? 7 pills cost 2,340 divine level jars? Isn't there a 1% chance, meaning 1 guaranteed per 100 jars? The system, too tired to retort, said, you must have been taught math by a physical education teacher. Yi Feng admitted his lack of knowledge. I should have studied harder. Little Blood arrived, looking puzzled. Luo Qianxue realized what he was thinking. You're not planning to have Little Blood concoct divine pills, are you? Yi Feng assured her, no problem, she can do it. At this moment, Zhao Ting came over. Young master, are you also a divine level alchemist? Little Blood kicked him instantly. With breasts this big in front of you, are you blind? After a moment, Yi Feng gave Little Blood all seven tribulation breaking pills, instructing her to consume them to break through, but to control her power and avoid ascending. After eating the last pill, Little Blood's strength reached that of an ascended great demon, but her spiritual power continued to surge. Yi Feng, alarmed, urgently advised her to suppress her spiritual energy to prevent ascension. Fortunately, Little Blood managed to control it at the last moment. The national teacher was utterly bewildered. She became an ascended great demon just like that? Luo Qianxue, curious, asked Yi Feng, what kind of pills did you give her? Yi Feng explained, they were tribulation breaking pills. Consuming one can help overcome a single heavenly thunder tribulation. Seven pills were just enough to bring Little Blood's cultivation to the peak of ascended great demon strength. Luo Qianxue was astonished. I've never heard of such pills before. Xiao Ting remarked in awe. No wonder he's called the pill god. Suddenly, I don't feel like cultivating anymore. The national teacher was even more stunned. It feels like my life and death struggle through the eight thunder tribulations was pointless. Luo Qianxue then inquired, do you have more of these pills? Yi Feng reassured her, don't worry, master. Everyone will have them, even little yellow dog. I've prepared for everyone. At this moment, the true form of little blood appeared. She joyfully sensed her newfound power as an ascended great demon, a spectacle visible to everyone. Golden Wheel, envious, said, this is a treasure that transcends the heavenly Tao Thunder Tribulation. How many more treasures does young Master Yi have? In the main hall, Little Blood was gracefully dancing to celebrate her breakthrough. The national teacher, beside himself with envy, lamented, why does a great demon get such good treatment? I really don't
don't understand. Xiao Ting cautioned him, don't get too worked up. Despite Little Blood's advancement and strength, Luo Chinchua was still a bit concerned. After all, alchemy skills don't necessarily correlate with combat ability. So, she asked Yi Feng to accompany Little Blood to the Red Sun King City. With Luo Chinchua's request, Yi Feng readily agreed, sure, let's take a trip to the Royal City, and let's bring Old Bai along this time. Half an hour later, several elders looked at the excited Little Blood with envy. Not only had her strength improved, but she also bypassed the thunder tribulation. Old Bai, however, was not as envious. Who would have thought? This time Yi Feng picked me, he exclaimed. Old Xia cautioned him, don't get ahead of yourself, you're not that favored. Luo Kai rolled his eyes. You two sound like concubines in a harem. Soon, Yi Feng and the group were ready to depart. The national teacher's flying spiritual artifact was unique, shaped like a house. Yi Feng was impressed, that's quite sophisticated. Thus, they departed on the house-shaped flying spiritual artifact, not forgetting to say goodbye to Luo Chinchua. Luo Chinchua just hoped Yi Feng wouldn't bring back any more people. The sect was getting crowded. Inside the flying artifact, Yi Feng relaxed and turned to Old Bai. Do you know why I brought you along? You're too weak. You need to cultivate diligently so I can help you ascend. Old Bai nodded profusely. Yes, yes, thank you, young Master Yi, for giving me this opportunity. Meanwhile, the national teacher and crown prince were slumped by the window, sighing. Yi Feng, puzzled, asked, what's with you two? Xiao Ting replied casually, it's nothing, we just want some peace. It turned out that learning about Yi Feng's experiences over the past few months had left them feeling overwhelmed and somewhat envious. Suddenly, the house shook violently, startling the national teacher and crown prince. Yi Feng quickly checked with the system to find out what was happening. It appeared that a war god from another country was attempting to assassinate crown prince Xiao Ting. Why Yi Feng was excited by this development? This is like a classic assassination plot. How interesting. But the Red Sun King country's security is really lacking if its crown prince can be so easily targeted. Outside, a war god from Thunder Martial Kingdom, named He Hai, laughed menacingly. He called out to the house, Zhang Dongfang, hand over the crown prince, and you can keep your life. Recognizing the voice, the national teacher knew it was someone from Thunder Martial Kingdom. He Hai continued to taunt them. Zhang Dongfang, why so silent? Hand over the crown prince. Yi Feng instructed Little Blood to deal with him. The next moment, Little Blood appeared before He Hai, sitting atop her heavenly tear furnace cauldron. He Hai pulled out a photo for comparison. Aren't you that bloodthirsty mantis? The photo showed Little Blood's previous fierce appearance. A bit embarrassed, she explained. Yes, that's me. But that was when I was still naive. He Hai burst into laughter. Looking at how docile you are now, and holding that broken cauldron, have you been turned into a meat cauldron? Enraged, Little Blood swung her cauldron at him. I'll show you who's the meat cauldron. He Hai, confident, sneered. You think you can take me? I'm about to ascend. The next second, he was sent flying by Little Blood's furnace cauldron strike. Talk about asking for it. Little Blood is getting more formidable. No wonder, as a body cultivator, she's so effective in close combat. He Hai panicked and tried to use his background as leverage. Stop. My ancestor is an elder of the Heavenly Martial Sect. If you dare to lay a hand on me, they will annihilate you. Little Blood was unfazed by his threats. Let's see if your background can save you. Yi Feng realized, isn't this one of the sects targeting master from Celestial Heights? We definitely need to take this guy down. He ordered Little Blood to finish off He Hai. Smiling, she responded, then I won't hold back. What followed was a one-sided thrashing, culminating in He Hai's death. Yi Feng's action triggered a revenge storyline against Celestial Heights, rewarding him with a 15-day Celestial Heights experience card. Baffled, Yi Feng commented, why would I need this? I'm not planning on going to Celestial Heights anytime soon. Just then, his communication jade sounded. Junior brother Wu Feng, what's up? Wu Feng's anxious voice came through. Senior brother, something terrible has happened. Yi Feng was alarmed. What happened? At the Star Soul set, a teleportation portal had appeared in the main hall. Luo Chinchue initially thought it was Yi Feng's doing and casually asked, Yi Feng, you're back so soon? However, the figure who stepped out was Luo Chinchue's master from Celestial Heights. Disciple, I've come to take you back. Luo Chinchue was startled. Meanwhile, Yi Feng was rushing back, glaring at the system. Is this how you protect our sect? The system awkwardly admitted, the Star Soul sect has always been safe, so I let my guard down. I didn't expect Luo Chinchua's master to appear and take her back to Boundless Sanctuary. Yi Feng was furiously incredulous. How am I supposed to see my master now? Yi Feng decided to forego visiting Red Sun King City and hurried back to the Star Soul sect at full speed. Regarding the injured war god of Red Sun King Country, he simply gave them a storage ring containing everything necessary for healing. After sending them off the flying spiritual artifact, he accelerated towards the Star Soul sect. Upon returning to the Star Soul sect, Yi Feng was furious. Is everyone here dead? Especially those with ascension level strength. Did you not notice anything? How could you fail to protect master? The elders were at the receiving end of his anger, but had no rebuttals to offer. Old Bai asked, what do we do now? Yi Feng responded, we have to go to Celestial Heights to bring master back. If we have time, we might as well enjoy ourselves there. He then pulled out the Celestial Heights experience
its card, and instantly, the stairs to ascend to celestial heights appeared before them. The elders were amazed at such a technique. Without further explanation, Yi Feng urged, let's all go together. However, junior brother Wu Feng expressed concern, people without ascension level strength might face severe consequences if they climb the stairs. Chu Xiao Xiao agreed, having heard similar warnings. But Yi Feng was no ordinary person, even the heavenly Dao feared him. With his protection, there was nothing to fear. Wu Feng realized this too. With senior brother here, there's nothing we can't overcome. Chu Xiao Xiao also decided to join the trip, as Luo Qianxue was her close friend. At this moment, little blood pointed to the side, where a golden tribulation cloud was flickering, accompanied by a red thunder dragon. It seemed to be the thunder tribulation preventing their ascension. It was then that the divine tycoon's guard spoke up. My lord, let me handle this. I've been waiting for days for my turn to show up. A girl with two horns on her head stepped forward excitedly, hoping to finally make a significant impression and earn a name from her master. But her excitement was short-lived as two new members of the Divine Tycoon's Guard appeared, each vying for the spotlight and the chance to be named. The girl was infuriated by their intrusion. You too, can't you play fair? It's just a fierce thunder tribulation. You all have activated your skills. In the next moment, the two newcomers surpassed her, each eager for the opportunity to be named. The girl was completely overshadowed, leaving her in tears. The thunder tribulation was effortlessly obliterated. Core disciple Chen Hao Yu watched in shock. Even such a tribulation cloud can be destroyed. Have these people reached the level of deities? No wonder junior brother Yi Feng can accomplish what we cannot. Yi Feng was also surprised. These guards really go all out for their moment in the spotlight. With that, the Star Soul Sect group, using the stairs, was about to experience 15 days in celestial heights. Upon reaching the inn, they saw an ancient looking building. So this is celestial heights. Yi Feng thought with a slight smile. He asked Golden Wheel, where in celestial heights have we landed? Golden Wheel explained, this is the Void Sword Sect. Head east to reach the Boundless Sanctuary. Yi Feng smirked, didn't expect to run into enemies right away. Looks like we'll have to give them a hard time first. The Divine Tycoon's guard members, still present, eagerly asked how they could assist in tormenting their foes. Yi Feng realized the guards hadn't left yet. One of them, a girl wearing a hat, removed it, revealing her identity. Our lord did not say we could leave, so we dare not depart. Golden Wheel was sweating profusely. These three have an aura even stronger than the previous golden armored strongman. How many guardians does young master Yi have? Why Yi Feng called Golden Wheel over to assign him a task. Golden Wheel assured him to command as he pleased. Yi Feng asked, as an emperor, you must have your own forces, right? Golden Will modestly replied, not much, just a small sect. That's enough, I allow you to return there once. Change your sect's name to Star Soul Sanctuary, and make sure the whole Celestial Heights knows about it. Golden Will was puzzled, why should we do this? Yi Feng explained, it's to welcome back master. I want the entire Celestial Heights to know that Star Soul Sanctuary belongs to my master. Golden Will laughed, young master Yi really knows how to play, I'll get right on it. Then Yi Feng instructed the three Divine Tycoon's guards, it's perfect timing. Take Old Bai and the others to give Void Sword Sect, the Legion Isle of Ping Lai, and Heavenly Martial Sect a beating. Make sure they feel our presence in Celestial Heights, and don't forget to plunder all their resources. The girl with white hair struck a playful pose. Why not just wipe them out? Yi Feng asked her, do you know what's the most painful thing in the world? The white-haired girl shook her head, clueless. That's when people are alive, but without money. Yi Feng laughed wickedly. The girl looked at her master speechlessly, while little blood, curious, felt there was more to it. Or when people die without spending all their money. Shortly after, people from the Void Sword sect arrived. Who dares to intrude into our Void Sword sect? The great ancestral elder and others, dressed in sleek black suits like mafia bosses, made a dramatic entrance. Removing his sunglasses, the great ancestral elder declared coolly, we're here to rob you. However, none of them possessed the strength of ascended beings, so the Void Sword sect members weren't concerned and prepared to eliminate them. Suddenly, the girl with white hair intervened, knocking the attackers away with a single punch. Consequently, the master of the Void Sword sect met his end. Similarly, at the Elysian Isle of Peng Lai, the core disciples followed the same script, dancing on the coffin of the Elysian Isle of Peng Lai's master, who also met his demise. Over at the Heavenly Martial Sect, Old Bai and his group used the coffin of the sect's master for a card game. Wai Yi Feng observed all this from the shadows, remarking, seems like they're having fun. He then turned to the system, I want it to reign in celestial heights. The system slowly displayed three question marks in response. While Yi Feng and his companions were causing a commotion in the three sects, in the boundless sanctuary where Luo Qianxue was. Her master was enjoying being groomed by Luo Qianxue. Luo Qianxue was somewhat speechless. Master, did you bring me back just to have me groom you? At that moment, the transformed true form of the boundless sanctuary sect master spoke. The lower realm is so vast, it was quite a struggle to find you. What's wrong with grooming me? But that damnable void sword sect dared to lay a hand on my disciple. Do they really think they can provoke the boundless sanctuary with impunity? Luo Qianxue advised her master not to rush into seeking revenge. Master, it's enough to remember the matter of revenge.
age. Please allow me to restore my strength first. My disciple, you should cultivate well on celestial heights, her master replied. After transforming back into human form, the sect master of Boundless Sanctuary reassured her. In the Boundless Sanctuary, I can't promise much, but at least I can ensure that no one dares to harm you again. Luo Chinchua had no objections. After arriving in celestial heights and informing my master about being ambushed, half of my problems were solved. I just wonder how the people of the Star Soul sect are doing. For cultivators, advancing from opening the energy sea to transcending in tribulation can take decades or even a century. Some even perish in the thunder tribulation. But with that spendthrift disciple around, it's only a matter of time before the people of the Star Soul sect ascend to celestial heights. I just don't know when they'll be able to reach here. Father, sister, Yi Fong, perhaps by the time they ascend, I won't even recognize them anymore. With this thought, Luo Chinchua couldn't help but shed tears. She used to complain about them hindering her cultivation, but now she missed them terribly. Truly a case of a sharp tongue, but a soft heart. Just then, a snapping sound was heard. Luo Chinchua, surprised, wondered, what's happening outside? As she stepped out, she saw a mortal crystal rain falling from the sky, with the disciples of Boundless Sanctuary hurriedly collecting them. Luo Chinchua was puzzled. What's going on? I've never heard of a mortal crystal rain in celestial heights before. Suddenly, she gasped in realization. This, this seems like something that Spendthrift Disciple would do. A moment later, the sect master of Boundless Sanctuary also appeared. She curiously asked Luo Chinchua, my disciple, what's happening? Have you perhaps arranged a marriage with someone from Celestial Heights? Luo Chinchua denied it. Master, what are you talking about? I don't have any marriage arrangement, neither in Celestial Heights nor in the lower realm. Just then, a loud noise thundered across the sky, and the next second, a huge spaceship appeared above the Boundless Sanctuary. It was Yi Feng's doing. He was shouting through a megaphone, Star Soul Sanctuary Direct Disciple Yi Feng, here to propose to the Holy Maiden of Boundless Sanctuary, Luo Chinchua. Luo Chinchua was completely stunned upon hearing Yi Feng's words, her face showing disbelief. When the Boundless Sanctuary Holy Lord heard Yi Feng's bold declaration, she angrily retorted, Where does this Star Soul Sanctuary come from? Never heard of it. How dare you propose to my disciple? In your dreams, Luo Chinchua explained, Master, do you remember the sect I founded in the lower realm? It's called Star Soul Sect, and Yi Feng is my direct disciple. However, the Boundless Sanctuary Holy Lord didn't believe her, saying, This is Celestial Heights. If it really is your disciple, I'll eat the Holy Lord token right here and now. The next second, Yi Feng jumped down, exclaiming, Master, I've come to fetch you. Seeing that it was indeed Yi Feng, the Boundless Sanctuary Holy Lord was left with a face resembling having eaten something distasteful, having been swiftly proven wrong, and she had no choice but to flee in embarrassment. Luo Chinchua asked in confusion, How did you get to Celestial Heights? And what's this about Star Soul Sanctuary? Yi Feng explained, Getting to Celestial Heights was easy. Boundless Sanctuary was just something I took over on the spot. Luo Chinchua, blushing, questioned him, Have you lost your mind? Announcing a proposal to me in such a grand manner, and I haven't even agreed yet. Plus, this could cause trouble. Yi Feng confidently turned around, Wife, you don't need to say anything. I know all about it. It's just the Void Sword sect, the Legion Isle of Peng Lai, and Heavenly Martial sect, right? Luo Chinchua, surprised, said, So you knew all along. Yi Feng pointed upwards, Old Bai, they've returned from their looting mission. Everyone happily announced, Sect Master, we've moved all the resources from the three sects. Luo Chinchua was moved to tears, so you all have dealt with them for me. Yi Feng then seized the moment to kneel on one knee. Wife, this is for you. Will you marry me? In his hand, however, was not a ring but the detonation buttons for the three sects. If Luo Chinchua pressed them, they would explode right then and there. Luo Chinchua, tears in her eyes, smiled. Thank you, Yi Feng. I really love this proposal. The Boundless Sanctuary Holy Lord was furious. I don't agree to this. However, he was quickly silenced by the Divine Tycoon's guards. When our Lord proposes, your agreement is not required. Let the damnable Void Sword sect, the Legion Isle of Peng Lai, and Heavenly Martial sect be destroyed, exclaimed Luo Chinchua as she pressed the button. In an instant, a massive explosion occurred at all three sects. Having done all this, Luo Chinchua looked deeply into Yi Feng's eyes and asked, Can I join you in this extravagant and reckless journey? Yi Feng nodded, Wife, I would be delighted. Meanwhile, in a mysterious space, the system known as Purple Star Lord complained, creating a mortal crystal rain over the entire celestial heights and turning the whole place into night, almost killed me. This beautiful woman was the system behind Yi Feng, saying, Host, I wish you both happiness. With Yi Feng's successful proposal, the story of Yi Feng and Luo Chinchua came to a conclusion. I, invincibility starting as the prodigal, the manga displays that the first season has ended. For fans of this manga, stay tuned to Manga Explained for updates on the arrival of season 2 and continued updates.